And it, uh, uh, I looked out and saw all those lights lit up, and it just, the uh, Holy Spirit came over me, and uh, oh my, I tell you, you've got a good family of God here that the Lord is assembling together, and He calls us the light. He calls us His light in this spot for this moment. And wherever you're at in your life, you're the light of God right there for that moment. We need to be conscious about how bright we're shining or if we're shining at all. But just understand, every moment in your history is orchestrated by the Lord. And the Holy Spirit will bring forth from you the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. And this season is about celebrating that Savior of the world. And I hope and pray that you're able to get into that with all your heart. I'm, uh, boy, I've got a good message today that I'm going to preach next week. Do not clap. <laughs> but I do want to make just a couple of comments. And, and in this case, it's going to be a couple of comments. I'd like to read my verse, uh, one of the verses, because I want you to get something out of it and be thinking about it. My title this morning was going to be Get Up, <laughs> Get Up, and uh, while it may not appear to be uh, that uh, dramatic to you, it is going to be. In Matthew, the text of the second chapter, verses 1 through 23, and I'm not going to read all of that because uh, Charlie did a good, good job with that to this morning, didn't he? That was so good. <laughs> And I would encourage you, as a matter of fact, uh, Brian and I were talking this past uh, Wednesday night at, at our men's uh, study and gave him four sections of scriptures entire to read. And he tells me Friday morning, he said, I read them all, read them all. And that's the beauty of the Word of God. And I, I challenge you to read every section of the birth of Jesus Christ in this Christmas season. Read it, read it all, read it all. It's so important, so important. <laughs> then Herod, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, here, here's what happens to people. They uh, forget that their glasses are laying in their lap and they get up and, and they fall on the floor and they pick them up. And sometimes they step on them first. <laughs> So these are about five years old, and I used to not could see at all. Now, I, you know, I don't know what the deal there is. Okay. <laughs> then, he, then Herod told him, the wise men, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. There is a message in, in every one of these verses as, as oh my... After this interview, the wise men went, went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was born. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. And in this translation, here's what, it, here's what the angel said. Get up. Get up. Flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is coming to search for the child to kill him. So he says, Get up and flee to Egypt and stay there until I instruct you to depart. That night, Joseph left, and this is important. It's not just important to know what God says. It's, it's important to do what God says. Amen. 
it's not just important for you to have a knowledge of, of salvation or a knowledge of redemption or a knowledge that Jesus Christ is, is the Son of God and He was born and, and given to us by God the Father Himself. That's great knowledge to have and so many people don't have it, but that's not enough. That's just the beginning of the great, great story of grace. You have to make the next step. I have to make the next step. And that is when he says, get up, then do something. Get up. And so Joseph was told to get up and go to Egypt in order to preserve the new baby, the birth of Christ, Jesus himself. And so the word says, get up. Flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay there. So he got up and he went, and he said, stay there. And what I want to, the point I want to bring up of, of, of the prepared message is this. Obedience is the one central theme of the grace of God. God can give you all kinds of grace. He can give you, and he has, all kinds of mercy and merit put upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He can forgive all of your sins, providing you get up and repent from your heart. Everything about the gospel requires an action command. Everything about the gospel. God the Father could have willed from the heavens and just said, I'm just going to forgive and we're going to do all this in heaven. But no, the action was that God had to give of himself. And he gave us Jesus, his son. It was the action of grace, the action of forgiveness, the action of sacrifice. And the most damning character flaw, character flaw of the human race, of the human nature, is that we choose to do nothing. If humanity sits idle, she will perish. It doesn't matter what heaven has done for us. It doesn't matter the provisions that's made for you to get to know him as Lord and Savior of your life and live with him forever in the heavens. It doesn't matter that he's done all that for you. It's necessary that he do it, and he did so. But that doesn't set me free. What sets me free is that when I reach up and I claim all of that that God has given me in his grace and mercy. That's what sets me free. And so Jesus, uh, Joseph is deciding here and, and showing us that yes, the angel spoke to him and said get up and go. That Jesus may be protected, the baby may be protected and he did so. And he stayed there until Jesus came back. When the Lord, when the Holy Spirit convicts our hearts that we need to repent, that we need to surrender our will, and that we need to tell God, I accept the grace of God. I accept your mercy. We just need to stand forth and do it. So it's get up. And we live in a lazy world. Yes, we do. We live in a world that would choose to do nothing if they could. People that work, we work because we want to work, but we need and must work. But we can, and we look for the day that we can go to the rocket chair. Remember, we talked about that last Sunday. What a, think about it. Why in the world would I look for the day that I get to quit work and, and rock? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand that. But when we look at, the, at humanity and realize that we, we will perish if we sit idle. You will lose your soul if you sit idle. When the cross is presented to you by the Holy Spirit, you will lose your soul if you do not reach up and accept the grace of God into your life. And you know why that there's so many things going around that busy our mind and take because everything is done on the head in the earth to distract us from the cross. This celebration season that we're about to enter into, there are distractions. They've been growing and growing and growing and, and it's, it's shopping and it's it getting and, and it's festivities and so forth. Every, uh, my, my friend,
favorite restaurant. And my favorite restaurant in the morning is not because the food's good, but because it's the cheapest I've found. But my favorite restaurant, I've had to just decide I'm not going to go anymore because Happy Holidays was the best they could do. And when questioned, uh, not, not willing to put Merry Christmas, I said, well, I'll just Merry Christmas on down the road. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it, 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 we, we get so many things, and it's, we think it's Christmas. We call it Christmas, but it's not the birth of Christ. It's not the grace of God extended down to humanity. And that's what we need to understand, that Jesus was born, that we might be forgiven. He was born and given to us as a Savior. He is called the Savior. He is called the light, even at his birth. John said, this is the light that was coming upon the earth. All the evils of the world are due to humanity doing nothing. Let me name a few. Hitler performed genocide because the earth did nothing. Though he was powerful, had all good men stood up at one time, he could not have gotten away with that. Hate runs rampant all over the earth because good men and women do not show enough love that will, that will conquer hate. Folks, I'm telling you, the light of God is important on the earth. We are God's light on the earth. We can speak to hate. Oh, hallelujah. Hate against love as is no competition. Thank the Lord. Evil will be dispelled when light enters into the room. Has no Darkness can't stand. It just cannot last when the light is turned on. Isn't that a beautiful thought? When, you're, when the power of Jesus Christ that reigns in your heart and vessel enters into a room, light comes on. That's a beautiful, beautiful thought. So I would say to us, get up, my friend. Get up. As the Lord, as the angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph and said, get up and take Jesus to Egypt because uh, the, the evil one is coming to kill him. And Joseph responded and took him to Egypt where, where he was told to go. The Holy Spirit, I would guarantee that the Holy Spirit has told every single one of us to come to the cross. And I would say to you, get up. Get up. If not this morning, sometime, if you haven't gotten up, get up and come to Jesus and accept Him as Lord and Savior and the forgiver of your life. Get up. And if you're in a situation where you're oppressed and you're beat down and the light of God is just so dwindling in you, I would say to you that the Holy Spirit is saying, get up and be the light of God. Get up and be the joy of the Lord. Get up and be God's fullness. God's glory. Oh, thank the Lord. There are so many people that I will mention next week in the scripture that teaches us the, the value of getting up, but it, 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 of standing up. And, and, but it, 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 you know what began with Noah? Noah was really the first one. I'll, I'll briefly tell you that. God tells him, tells him, says, Come, listen, build a big ship, a ship that you've never dreamed about and you don't know it. It's never even been thought about. And by the way, the storm is going to come. It's called rain and you've never seen rain, but it's going to happen. And Noah just got up and built the ark. It begins there and all through the Testaments you can read about how men and women of God just got up. The second one that I was going to, that, that I will mention this morning is, is, the, is a Moses' uh, adopted mother. She was the princess of the one that was trying to kill him. She was the daughter, I should say, of the one that was trying to kill him, Pharaoh. And she found Moses and, and took him and says, I'm going to raise him as my own. I'm going to adopt him and take him in as my man. So we don't hear much about her. But she got up and took this child and raised him until God could get his hands on him and transform him into the servant of God that he wanted him to be. When the 
Lord commands you to stand for. When He commands you to get rid of the, some things in your life, just stand up and do it. Just stand up in the glory of the Lord and declare it so because as a man and woman of God, you have the authority to declare it so. Father God, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. I am the light of God this past week and I shall be greater this coming week. By the anointing of Christ, I will be the light of God. Just stand up. Just get up as the Word of God says. Just get up. Hallelujah. Look at the person next to you and say, get up.
blessing, don't we? <laughs> and I just, I almost jumped up there and I said, no, that wouldn't look good. Didn't show up for one practice except to listen. This morning we're going to give an offering. And our offering today is taken because uh, we've, uh, Mike and I have found a couple of uh, real needy situations that we want this church to give to. So I would like for you to make mention of that in your, in your prayer as you pray. And as you prepare to give your offering, you're giving to it. This, this is Mission Sunday. You're giving to some needs in our local community that needs a touch and needs a lifting hand. And we're here to be God's people to give a lifting hand. These are working people. One of them works seven days a week. Seven days a week to, to, to just make it with the rent and with a, a child. An elderly lady and needing a needy, just a helping hand. And God's going to give it to her today in this offering. Father God, we bless you and praise you today. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, God, that you have given and provided unto us. And we're therefore going to share those provisions with someone else. Thank the Lord. There's so many needs that we're looking at, my friends. So bless the Lord as he has blessed you. Bless you, gentlemen. Christ 
is what we or the church is about. And we need to let that light shine from the body of Christ. Oh, Sylvester, let us, let us shine high. Let it bright. Let us lift it high for the glory of God. Do not leave until I walk out because there may be one or two of you who I've seen in a while and I want uh, a good neck hug. Praise the Lord.